Good day, everyone. Uh, welcome to the session. This will be manufacturing lecture session number four, and uh, it will be lecture number twelve for MGC one ten. Today we are starting with a, a new theme. Our theme for today will be sheet metal working. This is another method of manufacturing that is used in the industry, but it's worth noting. And we will be starting with this particular one. In the first slide, I just gave you general applications where you can find this uh, particular method. So, and some pictures there of things that we might be a little bit familiar with. These are sheets, rolled sheets, and then these are products made up of sheets. You have some clamps, and this here is corrugated uh, sheet. This is generally used for roof. For, for most of us, we might be familiar with that. And then this, I don't know, but it's just another shape that you you can have a box, maybe electrical box or something like that. Here you have uh, your garden jar or something like that. Parts that are, are used for our car features. And then pots. We have many more other applications where you can find sheet metal. In this... Uh, theme we are going to be dealing with uh, three operations that will be cutting bending and drawing basically cutting involves a, a a procedure where you cut the material or the sheet in order to form certain uh, features and uh, bending will involve bending of the sheet metal to form features drawing will involve another operation where you pull your your sheet metal to form uh, components so just keep that in mind but we are going to cover this for this particular session this will be sheet metal working one we will cover bending and drawing in uh, sheet metal working two that will be in the next session when we look at cutting we have sub operations this will involve shearing, blanking, and punching. So shearing is a process where we actually just cut our sheet metal. This is your sheet metal, I assume. This is a sheet metal. And uh, you apply force over. So you'll have a bench where you apply force on one side and then you will tear this into two parts. So maybe let me do something like this. I assume this is initially a looking for something that we can use quickly but this will also work so assume that this is your metal and uh, sheet one sheet on this side you have a bench that will be pressing up and this side you have a punch that will be going down and then as it does that it will shear this so that will be shearing and basically that is what you get with uh, all the operations but uh, for this particular one where you have a sheet like this with this particular width where you're just cutting, that would be shearing. And uh, the second and the third sub operation will be blanking and punching. These are, are two uh, type of uh, sheet metal working procedures which are closely related, but really what they mean is that the one, your product will be for blanking, your product will be the small feature, and then what you leave on the metal work, it, that will be your, your scrap. And then the other one, that will be uh, punching, but on this particular one, you are interested in the hole. So the bigger part becomes your, your, your part, and the small part that you cut out becomes your scrap. So maybe let's just apply uh, punching on over this. This will become now your part. This will become your, your scrap. As I was explaining, there's a force involved, there's a motion involved, and uh, your thickness of the stock will be your your T and clearance but we are going to cover all this penetration all these uh, uh, symbols as they they refer to certain parameters of our operations so maybe let's just go back a little the difference between sheet we have uh, metals where we some we call them plates some we call them sh uh, sheets Baby sheets will be up until thickness of roughly around 6 millimeters. Those will be your sheets. 
and uh, you have other plates sometimes you might find a, a a metal plate or metal sheet of dimensions that uh, are found in both so it's not a solid number that six millimeters everything six millimeters less sheets everything six millimeters above that will be your plates so let's just think about that so that that doesn't mean if it's so there's a there's an overlap between plates and uh, sheet metals so that will be your die and that will be your punch the punch is the one that is moving your die is generally not moving and uh, just keep that in mind and uh, we have something called galotin shearing this will be your punch and this will be your die and you have that actually we have this uh, machine in our workshop think of this part here as your your plate that is going to be shearing this is a cutting knife actually this is just a, a stand to prevent this plate from moving down as you start cutting blanking and punching as i described earlier on the part that you're looking at will be a scrap when you do blanking and the part that will will be small in punching that will be your scrap but th this one you can think of your punch for your paper so that that is punching the part that you're going to throw away is that small circle and you still need your whole paper here for this one i can't think of any example but i think you guys catch the meaning behind it we will be performing engineering analysis on this so that we can just cover basic things that we need to be aware of when we perform this uh, procedure so the first thing that you need is clearance clearance as i explained earlier on clearance will be the space that you need between the die and the punch remember in order for you to complete this procedure the punch needs to go all the way down that means for that to happen the least that can happen is that the this dimension here should always almost be as close to this but there are many factors that determines where this dimension should be to allow a successful uh, cutting procedure so usually the clearance is around four to eight percent of the stock thickness uh, this is not a set and solid rule it can depend on a lot of things but sometimes it can go as far as being one percent stock thickness or even less just think of this uh, like we spoke about eraser shield the same procedure happened on this particular thing so you had the same procedure and this was uh, in this case we 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 kept the bigger part so this is blanking maybe we wanted this this a material here to form something like a pin or something then this would have been punching if we we needed the material that was uh, on this on the spaces of the eraser shells okay so with the thickness you might go as low as possible but you can have even 0.5 percent depending on the thickness of your sheet so factors that we must look at thickness of the sheet type of the material strength of the material and there are a lot of things that you need to look at so these are just uh, on the sheet so you might even look at the speed at which you are performing the cutting clearance is defined as a multiplied by t t being thickness a being allowance for type of metal you can find this in in table 22.1 that is my textbook of course which might be a little bit different from yours and uh, clearance we define it as c so just remember that thickness of the stock in millimeters allowance is a factor for allowance you need to be practically on site doing some work after some time you are going to find which factor is more applicable for which thickness and for which material those type of things but that is why clearance takes account of the material which is a material factor and dimension of the material thickness okay the effect of clearance you need to calculate it or you need to get a feel of it ultimately so to set it up you can have a a, a, a clearance dimension if it's very close to the diameter of the hole you might have something like this where the two fracture don't meet and if this happens you are going to uh, spend a lot of in i mean you're going to spend on energy in order for you to break this otherwise this fracture lines should help you to break it up this is a crack if they meet here 
you don't have to push hard all the way but if they never meet you're going to be pushing a lot and uh, on the other side you might have if it's too large you might have a, a material with bears and you don't want this because if you punch uh, or make a hole through cutting punching or or blanking you are still going to have to work on this particular part in order to make it uh, a user-friendly component okay so we have this uh, dimensions on the procedure over here uh, this will be your punch and blanking and punching so the hole will be represented by H that will be diameter of a hole it can be a dimension of a hole and uh, that will be the die size DB and DH will never be the same because we have C between in between C is always gonna be there if you don't have C you are going to be wasting a lot of power during your operation so this is going to be very handy in the next few slides you must just keep uh, that in mind and uh, you have on the die you need to have a sharp end of the die at the top side and then when you go down you can have a an angular clearance this clearance just is just there to allow your material to fall freely so you don't have to push all the way out so you just you push and then it cuts then it it goes down freely that is because of its weight we will be dealing again with a uh, cutting force which is the remember i indicated that you will need force for this and i said take note of force over here this is because force plays a very significant uh, role in this procedure and you need to understand it and you need to be able to work around it when you do the analysis so usually you have this equation here stress is cause to force applied over the area and that is the force applied over area so that would be your stress and uh, therefore to solve for force your force will be will equal stress times area we just solved that actually but uh, in our equation we are looking for the cutting force required and the cutting force required will will be determined so in this equation we are looking for cutting force required to cut our metal and then for that we need to have uh, some material properties so for that we need to have some material properties uh, in hand in order to understand and calculate that force that we need to apply in order to achieve our cutting procedure so we will have the f is equal to s t L. so s times t times l l will be the length of your 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 mm, component that you need to cut if it's a circular component l will be the circumference true length of the circumference and the t will be the thickness of that uh, sheet and uh, s will be shear strength it's a material property it is tested most of the materials are given this uh, value they undergo some test and then their value is given to such a material and then on the other side if you don't have shear strength you can use ultimate tensile strength is also a material property but when you apply that ultimate tensile strength ts you have to uh, use the vector 0.7 so f is equals to 0.7 capital ts small letter t and l that will be your length again so that will be ultimate strength that would be a force these two should be roughly uh, close to each other meaning shear strength is equals to 0 0.7 ts and the equation and their 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 units are given their stress over here will be given by megapascals force you can have the newton area millimeter squared meter squared it can be kilometer square but it's just area but usually we'll retain millimeter square because we are dealing with very small lengths so no, yeah small lengths or thicknesses uh, length will be in millimeters remember to always have your units the same before you can use them shear strength megapascals and uh, ultimate tensile strength megapascals there i give the meaning of each and punch and die size determination so this is how you determine punch and uh, die size in your operation so when your operation is blanking and when your operation is uh, punching punch size are not the same for both and die size are not the same for both just keep that in mind this is because when you do the blanking you are interested in the outer edge that is the dimension of your 
of your interest outer edge of your component so you take the die size as your reference and then you need to subtract clearance on both sides if it's a diameter or if it's a length or from one side to the other you need to take c on both sides and then for punching we are interested in the inner dimension and for inner dimension we we get our dimension from the the punch and for the outer dimension we get our dimension from the the die so that's why over here when you size your punch you will say db you subtract 2c that is the clearance on both sides for die size you just take db for punching punch size is your interest here you say dh hole this is a hole and uh, die size you say d dh plus 2c this will be bigger but this material here you don't care much about you only care about this dimension here that's the one that you are going to process further and this is the one that you are going to process further okay we are now at the class examples class exercise number one a rectangular box of 30 millimeters times 70 millimeters needs to be blanked from a strip of 3 millimeter aluminium stock with the following specification specifications rather shear strength of aluminium s 220 megapascals and uh, a for this material is given as 0 0.05 determine the punch size and the die size and the blinking force the answers are given there so these are given number a and b is given in millimeters 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 and millimeters and then the c is 132 kilonewton you are advised to go and try this on your own and then if you have questions you can bring them to consultation uh, period class exercise number two same uh, problem but now it's punched and then you are required to give punch size and die size note that the force is not in this equation because the force in both uh, operations would be the same you get 30 millimeters and uh, 70 millimeters 30.3 millimeters 70.3 millimeters class exercise number three Calculate the force required to cut out the axle support plate from 0 0.5 millimeter thick steel sheet with a shear strength of 300 megapascals if the whole, whole component, including all holes, is to be cut at once. So here, you cut over here and you cut over here at once. That will be one cut. So what would be the force there? So remember, if you first cut the outside using the method that remember this is the part that we are looking for so cutting outside you are going to be now looking at uh, blanking and then when you cut inside you'll be now applying a uh, punching the force you add it on top of each other because you need a force to cut outside you need a force to cut on the inside and that is everything the answer to this will be uh, discussed in the consultation class thank you that was everything for sheet metal 1. We will cover drawing and bending in sheet metal 2.